All right, we're back for another day of Advent of Code, day 10. Here we go. Okay, it's a grid with a bunch of numbers. It's a topographic, topographic map, so I think these are elevations, trailheads. Um, the scores are, are there dots? There's no dots here. Um, we're marking out a trail. Okay, I should just read from the beginning. The height, yep, okay. Um, good hiking trail as long as possible and has an even gradual uphill slope. Any path starts at zero, at nine always increases by one. Okay. Any position that starts one or more trails scores the number of nine height positions from that trailhead via a hiking trail. Okay. Um, so we have a grid. Um, let's do. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to DFS out. Um, I think we do four adjacencies. We can't go diagonal, I assume. Um, hopefully. Um, anyways, and then the DFS is just going to be recursive and return the number of good paths. OK. Um, if, uh, let's do, that should be CX. Shoot. OK. Um, and then if uh, the elevation, let's also do um, convert it to ints. Okay. Um, and then if g of nx and y, cx, cy, then we can go there. Um, if uh, We do this. Um, then if we can't, yep, okay, this looks good. Um, nx and y. Uh, we should, do we need to add things to a scene set? I don't think we actually do need to add things to a scene set. Um, okay, sum of scores of all trailheads. Um, I think it's just going to be ij. Nope. What did I do wrong? Um, oh, this is the height zero. Ah, oh, shoot. That was. Oh, that's terrible. If this is actually the answer, I guess I can test on the sample input while I'm working on this. Um, sample input, I get 81. That's not right, anyways. Um, okay. Oh, I think I do need a scene set, right? Or no? Um, never include diagonal steps. Okay, we got that. Number of nine height positions. Oh, I see. That is technically different. Um, uh, okay. So I think in that case, if CXCY in scene, return zero. Um, otherwise, yeah, because we will export it. Um, otherwise, we're going to add it. And then if it's equal to 9, then I think we're fine, right? 737, rank 200, okay. Um, and then now it's asking rating, number of distinct hiking trails which begin at that trailhead, okay. Uh, I think now we just get rid of the scene set, right? Hopefully. Um, I think that was my earlier answer. Rank 94. I got some points! Uh, oh, cool. Nice. Um, it's not many points, but it's a few points. Um, yeah. Having written that bug and then quickly being... Because I had written that bug, I could very quickly realize how to modify my code to like reintroduce the bug to get the part two. That's really funny that my answer to part one was the answer to part two. Um, I guess it's mostly because part two wasn't like strictly harder. It was just, uh, it was just like asking for something slightly different. Um, cool. So yeah, so I guess I'll like quickly explain um, the question approach and then my bugs. Um, so 
Uh, we're given this grid. Uh, this feels like a very standard AOC problem. By the way, I just look at some meta note. I feel like I've gotten, I feel like there's been a problem almost exactly the same as this before in the previous year. Um, anyways, we're given this grid. These are each elevations. Um, you can only start at zeros and then you can move exactly one um, elevation up. So you can move to one of the four adjacencies as long as it is exactly elevation one increase. You can go from the zero to this one, then to this two, then to this three, then this four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and nine is the max height. And the question is basically saying, for every zero, um, we're going to call that a trailhead and count up the number of distinct nines you can reach from that zero uh, by like following these rules. And then that's like the, the rating for that trailhead. Add all that up. Um, part two instead asks, okay, not just the number of nines, but how many distinct ways are there to get from the zero to a nine. Um, and these are notably different because you could have cases like, like you can actually have, um, we're sort of bound by like the fact that these can only go up to length 10, but you can have sort of uh, patterns like this. Uh, shoot, I might run out of digits here. Um, oh, it's because I introduced spaces here. Yeah, you might have a path like this. And in this case, you can, like there's only one distinct nine you can reach, but there's actually, um, I think there should be four ways to get it. Like this is like two branches, like a left branch um, and then and then another left branch, and then a right branch, and then another right branch. So you can either go like from the zero left to get to this four, um, and then you can go like right on the second branch. Um, or yeah, you can take either either branch here. Um, so that's why these two numbers are different. Um, the yeah, so the way to solve this um, is this grid induces like a graph um, where each cell is a node, um, and then you have edges, like directed edges going from uh, nodes that are exactly one elevation apart in like the right direction. Um, and then you just, for every node that is a zero, you do a DFS and then figure out how many nines you touched in that process. Um, that's not how you do the first part. The second part is still kind of DFS-y, but you are not... So one key difference from a DFS is that since you care about the number of distinct paths to a nine, um, you don't want to mark anything as seen on your way when you're doing this DFS. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. Um, and for part one, so the way I set up my DFS is I set it up so that um, it would, uh, so, so DFS is normally written, is often written recursively um, because that is just easier. It's like less efficient to do so because you can't write it tail recursively, I don't think. Uh, yeah. Um, and oh yeah, of course you can't, cannot write it tail recursively. Um, so you just use up a lot of stack space, but uh, it's like fine. Um, that's why uh, this handy line is here, sys.set recursion limit. I don't actually need it for this problem. I think the, the maximum recursion depth here is 10 um, because of like how this graph is constructed. But anyways, uh, that's sort of a tangent. Um, I set up my DFS so that it would basically add up the result from all like sub DFS calls. Um, and then when you're at a nine, you return one and you only started at zeros. Um, and then this sort of just like naturally gets you what you want. Um, the mistake I made was for the first part, I did not use the scene set, um, figuring, and I sort of didn't think about the fact that you could get to a nine via like, you could get to the same nine via more than one path. And that what it really wants is the number of nines you can get to. Um, so I technically wrote the thing for part two, for part one. Um, and then when I saw part two that said like, oh, now it's not just the number of nines, it's the number of distinct trails. I'm like, great. And I comment out my scene set and there's my answer. Um, so cool. Yeah, that is um, that is all there is to Adventure Code Day 10. Um, yeah, uh, we're definitely starting to get into the part of Adventure Code where you're going to have, where you have to use like graph algorithms at least a little bit. Um, and I don't know, perhaps these are, um, these might be a little harder for some of the LLMs, but I'm not really sure about that because this still is pretty conventional algorithmic programming. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, excited for future days. I'm still continuing the trend of like getting some leaderboard points, but not many on part two. Um, hopefully this can uh, improve somewhat. Wow, four minutes is actually quite fast when you think about this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Cool. Well, that's all I have for Admin for Code Day 10. See you tomorrow.